This is Alan Susi, our Director of Nursing, and he is going to do a presentation on C. diff. Take it away. Thank you, Wendy. So, uh, C. diff, what does that acronym actually stand for? It stands for the title of a bacteria that causes a large intestine infection. The name of the bacteria is Clostridium difficile. Now that's a mouthful, so we're only going to use C. diff through the rest of this presentation. So, as I said, C. diff is a bacteria naturally present in your large intestine. But without, you live without symptoms of its effect most of the time because your immune system balances it out and keeps it from getting actively overtaking the rest of the system. When symptoms occur, the organism is actually multiplying and is not kept in control because it's overtaking and eating up all of the nutrients and all of the system uh, requirements that a normal healthy cell would actually enjoy. The symptoms and the severity of this infection are some of these uh, particular qualifiers. If you have a mild to a moderate infection of C. diff, you're going to have watery stool three or more times a day for two or more days. Or you might have mild abdominal cramps and some tenderness in your abdomen. If you have a more severe infection, you'll have those two symptoms that I mentioned already, but you'll also have the following. You might become dehydrated completely because your diarrhea is such that it drains all of the fluid out of your system. You could even get to the point where you would need to be hospitalized to overcome the diarrhea. You would have definitely watery diarrhea. It wouldn't just be loose stool, it would literally be liquid. And you might have it as many as 10 or 15 times a day. And sometimes it's quite explosive. It would definitely have a very strong and foul odor. Your cramps and your abdomen will be really much more severe, like knives and daggers sticking you in the gut. You will probably have a fever because the number of bacteria that have invaded your body have set up a response in your immune system causing you to have a fever, which is meant to help fight off this bacteria. You definitely will have possible you will definitely have nausea and you may even go so far as to vomit in addition to having loose stools. So here you are exuding from both ends of the spectrum. Loss of appetite clearly is a, a probability. If this goes on long enough, two or three to five days without being treated, you will lose weight because you won't be able to eat. And in the most severe cases, you might even have blood or pus show up in your stools. So that's a pretty nasty disease, if you want to put a label on it. Nasty is a good label. So what are some of the causes of this infection? Overuse or improper use of antibiotics is a very common one. Exposure to someone who has C. diff, and I stress this is a very transmittable uh, infection. And it's usually because people are not taking proper precautions when they're caring for someone who has C. diff. As an example, they handle soiled linens without wearing gloves. They change a brief without wearing gloves. Or even if they wear gloves, they take them off and they fail to wash their hands afterwards. So, needless to say, you're not following normal precautions, universal precautions, and that is a very major reason why this transmits to other people. Or, the not cleaning of hard surfaces properly with disinfectants in the bathroom, in the toilet seat, um, anything where the person's stool or secretions may come in contact, have to be treated with a disinfectant on a regular basis. The transmission of C. diff is by the fecal to oral route. It, for example, if the client moves bowels but does not wash hands and has touched a table, a kitchen counter, 
a grab bar, or even a telephone. It means the C. diff spores could be on those surfaces. Now, I want to just share with you a, a sort of a, um, a complementary idea about this. C. diff, in this respect, is very similar to MRSA, which they are able to survive for periods of time on a hard surface. And this is very important for prevention of your own exposure to these particular bacteria. Now, if you touch the surface, and then you touch your mouth, or you place a sandwich on the counter, and then you eat the sandwich, you ingest the spores that are present on the counter. Needless to say, you probably will become ill. C. diff spores can live on surfaces for up to five months. MRSA can live up to several months as well. So, this bacteria exists in air, water, soil, processed food, and even in human feces. It can get transmitted through contaminated food and water. And I might add that this probably can be transmitted to animals as well, especially dogs or cats. And because if they come in contact with it on a counter or they come in contact with something that this person's been exposing um, these spores to, and then they consume something, uh, et cetera, et cetera. They're just as susceptible. And then they start to end up excreting, and it could really accentuate the problem. Uh, this can also spread not only by indirect contact, but by literally direct contact with the person who is infected. When a person touches surfaces or objects that contain the bacteria, whether they're human flesh or they're hard surfaces, um, the spores are present. The, some of the risk factors that are involved in C. diff are these. Working in a healthcare facility, staying there for a long duration. Inevitably, if you work in a long-term care facility, sooner or later you're going to have a client or a resident who lives there who's going to have C. diff. There's long-term use of antibiotics is also a factor, is a risk factor. There's the long-term use of medicine to reduce acidity. Um, I would think something like omeprazole or one of those Pepsid or one of those things that are over the counter. Uh, they tend to upset the internal flora and fauna of your bowel, and that being one of these, uh, this uh, difficile bacteria being one of those. Uh, consumption of infected food and water would be self-evident. Touching infected soil, objects, and surfaces. Or, uh, and finally, uh, C. diff does not spread through air by coughing or sneezing. Okay. So how do we treat this problem? This is a pretty significant thing, right? We want to take care of this quickly. We don't want this to go on and on and on. So if you have a mild to moderate infection, it can be treated pretty well with antibiotics. Now isn't that, a new, isn't that kind of a paradox that you, this thing is caused by the overuse of an antibiotic, but you use an antibiotic to treat it? Only severe cases require surgery, which is pretty severe. Antibiotic, the choice of antibiotic is made depending on the severity of the infection, and by checking it uh, as a recurrent infection. Some examples of the types of antibiotics that, that, are, that, that can be used are metronidazole, vancomycin, and phytomoxicin. These are the ones that are commonly used. Self-care. How do you care for yourself when you have this problem? Drink, drink, drink until you can't drink no more. Eat starchy food and take a liquid diet. Why do you think you would take starchy food? Uh, I think you would take starchy food because it's carbohydrates and um, it would stop you up. Yes. And the carbohydrate part is probably the most important. It gives you some restoration of your energy and your needed sugar balance in your system. Because being so dehydrated, you're likely to have an imbalance of those of that uh, sugar level in your body. Um, and, and taking a liquid diet is easier to 
tolerate than taking a, a firm solid diet. Um, so what are some medic medical procedures that can also um, be done? Well, I mentioned surgery. What they sometimes actually have to do is a colectomy, where they remove part of the bowel. Uh, they might do a fecal transplant. They actually put healthy stool into the affected bowel to help restore the balance. Now, where they get the healthy stool from, I don't have an idea. I can only guess that it might come from another family member who has a similar genetic system. Um, and then finally, there are therapies like probiotics, like acidophilus, which people take on a routine basis as a supplement. And there are others out there, too, that they've created more recently. Acidophilus is one of the older ones um, that we know of. But though, using those probiotics on a routine basis, sometimes, now they even make them in the form of like a yogurt. Um, and many, many people drink them or, or consume them on a daily basis. And they actually do make a difference in keeping a balance. And the good thing is they can be used to help someone recover from C. diff as a way to restore the balance within their bowel. So what do we do to prevent this? Well, there's nothing more to say than wash your hands. Good hand washing technique is probably the most important thing you can do, as it is in all aspects of care. You gotta use water, and you gotta use soap for at least two minutes, and you gotta use lots of friction. So it isn't just running in, throwing your hands under the water, doing a couple of flip-flops with your hands, and then turning the water off and drying them off. Because all you're going to do then is put all those spores all over the towel. And then when you come back the next time you use the towel, guess what? You're going to have all those spores all over your hands again. Best thing to do? Everybody knows how to sing happy birthday. Or pronounce Mary had a little lamb. Maybe that's a nursery rhyme that some of you don't even know. Let's go with happy birthday, because most people know happy birthday. And just sing that happy birthday while you're washing your hands, and it should give you the correct amount of time you need to properly wash your hands. Wash your hand well and often. Can't, there's, no, I mean, there's no rule of thumb better than every time you think you've got a dirty hand, wash it because you probably do have a dirty hand if you're thinking about the fact you have a dirty hand. If you're in doubt, wash it anyway. Always, always wash your hands after using the bathroom. When your hands are visibly soiled, and clearly before you prepare a meal for anyone or yourself. Alcohol-based sanitizers are not effective in preventing C. diff. You need the friction that is created with hand washing to break down the C. diff spores and get rid of them. Wear gown and gloves if necessary when you're caring for a person with C. diff. And this is one of the times when gown and glove together is appropriate. You might get away for a little while with a mild case of C. diff with just gloves, but you're not going to get away with it if they've got a severe case because Sometimes the diarrhea is explosive. It is, I mean, it goes everywhere. Uh, especially if a person is confined to a bed because they're too weak to get out. Uh, and you're handling lots of dirty linens most of the time and so on and so forth. Um, so universal precaution, gown and gloves. A mask, as was pointed out, isn't necessary because this is not transmitted by air. It's only transmitted by touch. Always, always wash your hands after you remove your gloves. Clean hard surfaces with a disinfectant solution. Pay special attention to the surfaces in the bathroom and the kitchen. Doorknobs, walker, and railings. Clean the surfaces on a regular basis with a household disinfectant or diluted bleach as an alternative. Usually a half a cup of bleach and a quart of water is a good measurement. It's also recommended that soiled linens be handled as little as possible. Heavily soiled linen should be laundered separately and not with other clothing or other linen. Use only hot water while using chlorine bleach in the washer. 
You may choose uh, Clorox germicidal wipes and solution to clean with or just buy anything that says disinfectant on it in the store can be used whether it's a spray, a wipe, uh, whatever it might be, a powder that you mix with water. Uh, as long as it's disinfectant, they will kill. But it has to have the disinfectant notion on it and it has to have some level of bleach in it. It's really the bleach that will kill it. Okay, so you're probably safest if you just mix up bleach and water and use that to clean with. But be careful you don't overdo it because bleach can be really strong and it can affect you as the person using it as a cleaning agent. Never mix bleach with any other product, especially ammonia. Never, because you will kill yourself or you'll come close to it. You create a poisonous gas instantaneously upon the com combination of those chemicals. If possible, use a separate bathroom for the person who has C. diff so that they don't cross-contaminate the rest of your family. So looking at all of these, this picture of this terrible, terrible illness that can come upon people, and often it comes upon the elder population because of their weakened immune systems, uh, or because they've had some problem which required them to take large doses of antibiotics, we want to be prepared as caregivers because you will face this problem not only in an institutional setting but you will see it in the home care setting. It's clear to us now that um, because people are not staying as long in hospitals um, and some people are very short stays in rehab centers, they sometimes even will go home with an active case of C. diff and be treated by the visiting nurses at home uh, with an antibiotic, IV antibiotic or otherwise, and then whoever's at home caring for this person will need to be educated on how to do it properly. And as our caregiver, we have the responsibility to help demonstrate and model for the people in the home how to do this. So thank you for taking time with me today, and I look forward to more of you attending and watching things at TLC Academy. Thank you, Alan.